Hi everyone, welcome back to WDoge Academy and welcome back to Introduction to Programming using Java. So before we get started, let's just do a quick recap of everything that we learned so far because it's a lot of content. So what we did so far, we know how to work a little bit with Java. We know that Java is a high level programming where we first develop a class, a file that uh, has the extension .java. And then this file we have to compile and this compilation will generate what we call bytecode and it will have the name of the file, but the extension is .class. From there, the .class file, the bytecode will be used by the JVM to send like operations, commands. It will be used by the operating system to achieve what you are telling the computer to do. So this is with what we have done so far to develop. We saw that we could use several different IDEs. For example, we started with Visual Studio Code, but then we installed IntelliJ and that the IDE will make our life easier when developing. It's going to speed up and going to give us like fast feedback about any errors that might happen. So let's just open the IntelliJ Community Edition and let's do the same program we did previously. So we are going to create a new class. You will see that's a bit easier. For example, now I have these messages here about indexing. If you want to always download it, it's going to load your uh, IntelliJ idea faster. You can check this, what's new, uh, but if you go to the website, they have the same thing. For now, you can just close this. Okay, so remember, this is your project. If you want to open your project where it's located, just right click, open in. And then you go to Explorer and you will see your project right here. So what we are going to do now is create a class. Remember, every time we are developing in Java, we need to have a class wrapping. Our code cannot just hang somewhere. We need to have the code inside a class. This class, the name of this class must be exactly the same name of the uh, file. Now, how can we do this? Since we are using IntelliJ, IntelliJ is an IDE that will help us to have this process that are quite, let's say, cumbersome to yeah, at some easy level. For example, let's create a class here. Right click, you see this SRC, it means the source folder. We are going to right click here and then we are going to select new and you can see you have several different options here, but what we are looking for is Java class. And then you see here that you have different types. You are going to learn all of this in the Java one for all. For now, we are going to work in this course only with classes. And then we gave the name hello. You know that the Java is a language that has a convention. And the convention for naming classes is that the first letter of each word should be uh, uppercase. You can, of course, create lowercase, but you are outside the convention. All developers all over the world, they are using the correct convention. Okay, so now we have here hello. If you want to have hello world, it should be like this. So let's just press enter now. And as you can see, or you probably cannot see because not even I can see, I'm going to come here to the settings and then I will come here to editor and then font. I will change here from 13 to 24. Um, maybe even a little bit more, 28. Okay, so as you can see, every time I click uh, IntelliJ, this key promoter X is giving me uh, like the shortcut for the, the action. Now that we have the class here, basically by just right clicking and giving the name, we can see that IntelliJ is creating from kind of a template. As you probably noticed, we have public class and hello world. Now remember, in Java, we need something to act as a starting point. What is this starting point? The starting point is something that the, the JVM will understand. Okay, I need to start from here. Let's then create that. Public static void main string args and then you just open and close. Do you remember the rainbow brackets? You can see this one is green, this one is blue. So it, it's easier for you to understand where you are opening and where you are closing. So you see that also we have some indentation here 
this is IntelliJ organizing it for us. If you have something not organized, for example, let's say you have something like this, it's quite uh, in a different organization that it's supposed to be. What you can do, you can either come here to code and there is this reformat code or you can just press Control alt l and you will see that IntelliJ is going to organize a little bit for you. Now, same thing we did before. Let's send a message. System.out. And did you see that we have these boxes? So these boxes is what we call IntelliSense. IntelliSense will try to predict and give you options about what you are trying to achieve. So we did that for the public. For example, public, we give here the option. Then static, we have another option. Void, we have another option. Main, we don't have any option because main is the name of the method. So it's a name that you are giving. IntelliJ will not try to give you any names. And then string, something that IntelliJ recognizes. And then args is also a name that you are giving. And then system, you can see that IntelliJ is giving us. So you can just double click or once you have it, you can just press enter then print ln. So you can see that they have different options. Remember, ln will print like in one new line. And then we used a nice message. How do we execute? So remember previously that we were always compiling and then we had to execute. IntelliJ is going to do that for us. If you noticed here, we have a play button. This play button is going to run this program or you can come here and also click on run or you can use the shortcut alt shift f10 and then if we do this alt shift f10 in my case here i have this assigned to other shortcut that's why it didn't work let me see if control shift f10 is going to work yeah in my case control shift f10 did the trick and then as you can see here we have the output so IntelliJ has also a terminal that you can activate or deactivate by clicking here or pressing Alt F12. So we have the terminal, but this, what we are seeing here is not the terminal. Basically, this is kind of uh, just, uh, let's say, a console where it's going to show your program running. So it's not exactly a terminal because you cannot write anything here in the, the console right now like differently from what we have here in the terminal. So we have the console where you have the run and you have the terminal. Every time you run from IntelliJ, you will have the console here. So if you close the console, you can also run again to see the results. And then we have Hadouken. So if you want to change here, you have another one. You just have to execute this again. Have you noticed that we are not saving? We are not having to compile again. Why is that? This is an IntelliJ feature that every time you type, IntelliJ saves automatically for you. And then when you run, this project is already saved, then IntelliJ is going to compile that for you, and then you are going to get the result by running. So IntelliJ is doing everything behind the scenes for you. So William, what is the hello world class? What is the bytecode? If you notice, we have here a new class called out. If you just go over this out, you are going to see hello world. So right click here and go open in Explorer. If you double click here, as we did before, this is exactly the byte code that we had in the, the previous video. Basically, it's just in a different place. So clicking here, we are going to see the same byte code as before. But if you go through IntelliJ and you double click here, you are going to get like a message from decompiling. You have to accept the terms. But if you take a look, it looks exactly our class. Just go over here. You see hello world. This is our .java and this is the bytecode. So this is the, the compiled bytecode. And as you can see, it's pretty similar to what we have. There are some differences that you are going to understand when we talk about in the Java 1 for all. Uh, course, but as you probably noticed, it's not impossible to understand. It's basically the same thing. So decompiling was able to generate from the bytecode the kind of the same Java class. 
So this is useful. Sometimes you don't have access to the source code, but you need to understand a little bit how things were, were, were done. And this can help you a little bit. But we are not going to work with the bytecode. What you need to remember is bytecode is generated for you. IntelliJ is generating every time you, you run your code. The classes are saved, the files are saved automatically. And basically you just have to run and IntelliJ will do the rest for you. So this was just an introduction to IntelliJ. In the next video, we are going to talk a little bit more. We are going to go into details about how variables they work, how do we declare, and some types of variables that we have available in Java. So I hope you enjoyed. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.